Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jenna and I write science fiction and fantasy novels and help you put the magic back into writing. But how can you put the magic back into writing if you don't know what you're writing? This is the video for everyone who needs to come up with book ideas. Here are the main ways that I come up with them. My number one way that I get book ideas is actually through my dreams. This is obviously not possible if you're someone who does not dream or does not have very vivid dreams or your dreams are just not something you'd want to write about that's completely fair. But I've had quite a few book ideas come from my dreams. So listening or maybe having a, a dream journal or maybe writing down your dreams on your phone when you first wake up. Just if you think that your dreams could be something interesting to turn into a book, then feel free to try and remember them to tell people about them as soon as you wake up, to write them down, and that way you can go back to them later on. Connected to that is culture. I specifically love learning about other cultures, whether they're past, present, what we think the future could look like, where I get my sci-fi ideas from, aka. But in general, I really love cultures and I'm, you know, an English and anthropology major currently in college. So literally I have to learn about culture and history for school regardless. And I enjoy that a lot. So that's able to inspire me in my own books and writing very easily. I would just be careful with this one and say a caveat to that is do not culturally appropriate other cultures. If you're not from that culture, don't just go, oh, I'm going to go write about Nigerian culture. I'm gonna go write about Chinese culture. If you're not Chinese or Nigerian, that's probably not a safe bet, but you could very easily learn something about Nigerian or Chinese culture that you're like, oh, that's really interesting. I wonder if I can play with that idea, that one aspect of their culture and change it a little bit so it's suited more towards this thing in this fantasy setting. So for example, I always really want to write a story that is inspired by the cultural aspect of Italy where there's the channels and everyone uses little tiny boats to go through the towns and there's rivers and waters that are all swimming through the town. But I would of course put this in a fantasy setting and I of course would not base it on Italy because even though I'm a little bit Italian, I don't feel like I'm Italian enough to write a story based off of it. I would find it really, really interesting to write a magical city that is similar to towns in Italy that have the channels going through them with the little boats. But I would not say it was Italian inspired and I would not pull anything else from the Italian culture off of that except for maybe pasta because let's face it I love food and I'm going to put it in most of my books regardless. Next is architecture. This is an aspect of culture and an aspect of history that you can definitely pull from and meld together in really interesting ways but you of course have to make sure that hey I can't exactly pull from old Norse dwellings and set those architectural features into a story taking place in a magical version of Africa because the architecture of Norway is obviously going to keep things very hot on the inside and in Africa that's not really going to fly. So of course you have to think about these logically but they can still help you in your story to inspire you. Next here is my little anthropology wanting to be have an archaeology degree brain coming here but archaeology is fascinating again if you hate any of these things like fuck architecture fuck archaeology i don't mess with any of that stuff then obviously you're not gonna be inspired by these things but just in case you are interested in them these are my tips so archaeology is so fascinating so one of the things that i wish i could see more people doing is when we find really sad or really interesting burials or when we find really interesting pottery and other things like that i would love to see more people write stories based off of what they think that person's life would have been like what got them to the specific point where they died what got that specific piece of pottery in that specific place writing stories inspired by those things of course it could be in any genre but just imagining oh this is a really sad story of this couple in Pompeii who were holding each other under the stairs as an earthquake happened. Oh, you know what? That gives me a really sad backstory for the main character's parents. Like that it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one comparison, it doesn't have to be a perfect pullover, but finding things in archaeology to inspire you for your stories, no matter what genre they are, can be really, really interesting, and I wish I heard more people talk about it. Next, of course, to be inspired by other media, such as other books, other TV shows, other movies, video games. Most of my books are inspired by video games. And the great thing about this is that then those things become comps for your book and audiences who love that other media will then go, oh, I'll probably like your book too. And this is very easily when a lot of people say refill the creative well, they mean consume other media. Next tip is fan fiction. This is another place where I get a lot of my book ideas from, is that if you're like, oh, I love this other piece of media, let me go read some more fan fiction about it to keep myself in this kind of world because I find it compelling. Well, what if you wrote a world similar to what you were consuming? For example, I've seen down a couple different times for a couple different fandoms that I am 
a fan of, that they do East of the Sun, West of the Moon inspired books for those characters. So I've read like a Zutara one where he turned into a dragon. I've read a couple other ones where people turned into like dragons, bears, and other things like that. And so that's when I first heard about the myth, East of the Sun, West of the Moon, and then I dove into it more and I was like, this is a really interesting concept of a myth and I would love to play with it one day. So that set in the, in the back burner of my mind. I was like, oh, I always wanted to do a story based off of that. So when I actually watched Fruits Basket, I was like, oh my god, let me blend these two ideas together, play with them in my mind, set it in a small Viking town in Canada, and bada bada bing, bada boom, you have my latest work in progress, which if you have not heard about, that's the comps for it. And I'm not saying too much else from that, but I'm probably do a writing episode about it soon. So feel free to take from fan fiction, learn from fan fiction, because those things are damn well addicting, and they don't even have to have proper grammar or spelling and people still eat them up because they're fantastic storytellers. Not necessarily fantastic, like, grammar people, but they try and we love them for it. And sometimes when they have a great mix of both, chef's kiss, wonderful, we love it. Next is attached but very specific is that if you're writing romance, as I do, I typically write things like romantic fantasy, romantic sci-fi, like all of my books need to have a romance in them. But a lot of my inspiration actually comes from couples I find in other media where I'm like, ooh, I'd love to play with that trope. That doesn't make sense. So for example, I'll go, oh, I love Dragon Age Inquisition. I am obsessed with Cullen and the Inquisitor who is a elf love Ellen because that's who I always play and that's who I always romance. What if I wrote an entire book with playing around a little bit deeper with the dynamics of those characters on a deeper, more traumatic level and boom, you have my Viking family whip that I'm working on right now. And it's great because if anybody asks about it, I'm just like, it's Viking Dragon Age Inquisition with a Cullen romance. And if people know that media, they're immediately like, I want to read that. <laughs> this is where I typically get the rest of my ideas from, but these are just characters. So for example, I will be like, oh, I love this character from Dragon Age Inquisition named Dorian. What if I gave him a lot more trauma? And then he became knights from <laughs> Spaceborn. <laughs> so I literally pulled my, my story, which is Spaceborn, which is inspired by Mass Effect. I was like, you know what other character? I love to see Dorian from Dragon Age Inquisition. Let me play around with him a little bit, mess him up some more, and then make him his own kind of thing and put him inside of Spaceborn. And that became the character Knights. So feel free to play around with characters, tropes, other things that you see in other media or in your own personal life, and feel free to give it a little bit of a twist. So you're like, oh, I love this character from the show, but what if she lost an arm? Oh, I love this character in here, but what if they weren't the side character? What if they were the main character? All these can lead to great, fantastic ideas for your book. And the more you work on it, the more you spin on it, the more unique your idea is going to become over time and the inspiration will basically fall into the background. You'll be like, oh yeah, this was inspired by this media and it'll have some of the flavor of it still, but it'll become its own unique thing and won't be really comparable one-to-one -to, -one to the other media. After you add more of these other inspirations in, after you've worked on it for so long, it'll become its own unique thing. Next place I get inspiration is just from the universe. This is really great if you are writing something with like celestial magic or sci-fi, but looking at things that are happening in space is so interesting. For example, you're writing a fantasy and you want to figure out how the world is really different from Earth, go look up what other planets are supposed to look like that have a probability for life. Like there's planets made out of like diamonds. You could like totally play around with that idea. And then just imagine what life would look like on that planet and boom, you've got a fantasy novel or boom, let's say someone crash lands on that planet. Now you have a sci-fi. Speaking of sci-fi, if you are writing a fantasy or science fiction novel, I highly recommend my video all about how to write science fiction and fantasy novels and all my tips for those genres. I will leave them linked right there. But that's it for me today. So comment down below if any of these tips helped you or if you have any other places that you get inspiration from. But that's it for me today. So remember to subscribe for more writing videos every Friday to help you with the magic back into writing. I'll catch you guys next time. So bye.